How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. So I made $500,000 in the past 12 months. First, there needs to be a little bit of celebration, but I also don't want to make this into some sort of bragging video. Instead, I want to break down how exactly I made every single penny, the thought process behind it, and what you can do to reproduce this for yourself. This video is brought to you by the Moomoo app. It's a free trading app that's giving away free stocks. The app itself is owned by Futu Incorporated and is a member of FINRA and SIPC. Right now, Futu is celebrating its ninth anniversary where if you play this game and rank top 5,000, you're gonna earn up to $400 from a prize pool of $200,000. Not everyone's gonna be into playing these games, so you can still open up an account and get a free stock value between three and $350. If you decide to deposit a little bit more, $2,000 can get you a free share of GM stock worth up to $58. This is such a great deal, I did it myself. $58 on $2,000 deposit, it's roughly 34% APR. It's a very short time to earn $58 on $2,000. So check out my referral link down in the video description below. Keep in mind though, I do not encourage anyone to copy exactly what I did because everybody's situation is different. Everybody's risk tolerance is different. If your net worth is say $10 million and you make another half million. This is not exactly a huge gain. My initial net worth was around $1.6 million. So to go from 1.6 million to 2.1 million or so, this is a significant leap. Here's the breakdown, 205,000 in Dogecoin. So you might go, oh, okay, you got lucky in cryptocurrencies, okay. But I also made 100K in retirement accounts, which is in traditional stocks that I bought. And then on top of this, another 130K on house appreciation. This, I wouldn't say it took any skill at all because I live in this place and it basically automatically went up as the market went up. These three items, which is the major gains here, is actually untaxed as of now. I have to sell my cryptocurrencies in order to get taxed on it. The 100K in retirement accounts, it's also untaxed until one day I retire and I decided to slowly withdraw from it. The 130K in house appreciation is essentially unrealized gain until I sell the house. I also have minimal gains in tax brokerage accounts, which amounts to about $3,000 and actual real income from YouTube. Here it is for the past 12 months, around $66,000 or so. You might say, wow, that's really little for the amount of subscribers that you have. Well, I actually wasn't really working that hard on YouTube the past year or so, maybe 25% time. Lately, you guys might have noticed that I put in a lot more effort. Well, it's basically full time now. I work at least 40 hours on these videos for you guys and to make content that you can actually use that would affect your financial future. The 66K also includes about $5,000 of eBay sales and also probably one or $2,000 of scrimping of like couponing and stuff. So it doesn't add up to much. Now let me compare my performance of my entire net worth compared to the S&P 500. I've broken down 12 months ago in November 1st, 2020, compared to November 1st, 2021. You see on the right side, I have cash, Dogecoin, brokerages, retirement accounts, the home value, non-cash assets, which is like my car, camera equipment and things like that. When you add it up, it's about 1.6 million 12 months ago. Without the home, it's $605,000. So this is not that much. It's enough for lean fire. And then I added the SMP value over here, 3,548. 12 months later, I have 177K of cash. I have 278,000 of Dogecoin, which is about 1 million Dogecoins. 100K in brokerages, 422K in retirement accounts. The home value increased to 1.03 million. Non-cash assets, surprisingly, did not depreciate. And I account about $65,000 of this to my Tesla Model 3 performance. That gives a grand total of 2.08 million. The total without the home and non-cash equivalents is 977K. If you look at the gains here, I got 75% gain in cash, which is inconsequential because I moved money around and then I got a minus 50% reduction in brokerage accounts, mainly because I moved a big chunk of that into buying Dogecoin. And so I increased my retirement account by 120K. 20K roughly of this is my pre-tax contribution. So I have a 40% gain over here just over the last 12 months. So this is pretty good. The home value increased by 14.5%. Non-cash assets increased by about $1,000, which is amazing, mainly due to my Tesla car appreciating in price. If you look at the overall total net worth gain, it's 32%. This is 
pretty significant because my total overall net worth is pretty big already, depending on who you ask, of course. But if you look at the investable assets portion, then it's an increase of 61.5%. Over the same time period, the S&P increased 30%. So in terms of overall net worth, I am doing pretty well. I am doing on par with S&P, even though I paid off my home. Some people would rather not pay off the home and invest the difference instead. So in this case, it's kind of on par as if I didn't pay off my home and just invested all of it into a stock market index fund this past year. Keep in mind this past year, S&P 500 has done insanely well at 30% gain over one year. I went back and looked at one of my previous videos titled how I'm earning a Tesla Roadster. Now this car is $250,000. I did not have this amount of money to spend. When I released that video, it was November 5th, 2020, roughly one year ago. At the time I scrimped I sold stuff on eBay in order to earn enough to buy a Tesla Roadster. And when I released that video, I amassed about $5,600 towards a car. And I said at the time, this is not scalable and I probably cannot squeeze that much more money out of whatever I'm currently doing. At the time, I had a net worth of about 1.6 million. My income was roughly 100K every single year. My net worth increase rate at the time was around 100K per year. And I anticipated my net worth if I was doing well, I'm gonna add another 100K to my net worth. So I said this, anything I earn above 100K, I can assume I can apply this towards my car. If I earn more than this per year, I can apply this towards the car. Right now it stands at 2.08 million, which is 380K over my target of 100K. So I hit the target and went way beyond it. How come I did not buy the car? I think it's because it's not really financially responsible just yet. I always think it's kind of comfortable if you have a certain net worth and if you're gonna buy something, if it's a car, it should be roughly less than 10% of your net worth. So although I probably could just purchase it right now, it's not a financially responsible thing to do. And I kind of cringe at thinking about pouring that much money in there and not investing it instead. But let's talk a little bit about Dogecoin and the theory behind why I invested in it. I released on March 3rd, 2020, roughly eight months ago, on why I am buying 1 million Dogecoins. I have no insight on knowing if this is gonna go up in the future or whatnot, but I do think that if you want to win a lot, you at least need to play. At the time of release of that video, I was still calling it Dogcoin, and I actually bought 320K Dogecoins at the time, and I was planning to keep on dollar cost averaging, keep on buying into it until I amass about 1 million Dogecoins. Here are my buys, February 12th, 126,000 Dogecoin, and I keep on buying it every week. February 20th, 181K coins, not dollars here. So if you add all this up, it's about 915K of Dogecoins. With the principal amount that I spent in US dollars of $50,000, eventually I put in another 24 thousand dollars in in order to make it a nice round even number of 1 million dogecoin of course by that time it kind of ramped up quite a bit that's why i had to spend twenty four thousand dollars on the remainder of the coins now why was i able to buy dogecoin at the time i was looking for something that could 5x to 10x in gains and i said this in that video eight months ago and my anticipated profits for this is somewhere between the 5 to 20x range i know this is a lofty goal but this is one of these moonshot type of investment that I do all the time. Being financially independent is part of the secret sauce. You need to have enough money so that you can invest a small portion of it and not be too worried that it's going to fluctuate greatly in value. If at any time you invest 100% of your investable assets and you see it swing up 50%, down 50%, it's gonna drive you crazy. You're never gonna be able to sleep. I personally was not willing to risk everything on a highly speculative bet because Dogecoin, in the end, it's a bet. So at the time, I have about 500K of investable assets and 10% of this is 
$50,000. I was comfortable doing maybe 20K of investment, but I really needed to hit that target. So I went up to, you know, as close to my limit as possible, which is 10% in something highly speculative, something super duper volatile. At the time of the release of that video, you certainly should not invest $50,000 into Dogecoin if you only have $50,000. If you do something like that, it would be like FOMO all in type of thing. And yes, you know, some people got really lucky. In hindsight, yes, I should have put all my money in as well. But as a responsible investor, you don't want to risk so much in one single asset. As I said before, in the last 12 months, I made about 100K in my retirement accounts. I bought into Tesla at its local minimum of around $600. May 24th and June 16th, 100 shares each, so I had a total of 200 shares. I did sell for a profit of $90,000 and you might say you shouldn't have sold, but gains are gains and this is what realizes the $500,000 in net worth gains. If it's unrealized, well, it could just very well disappear. I'm not gonna talk about the reasoning why I sold. Maybe I'll leave it for a different video, but I didn't announce that I was buying into Tesla. There's just too much craziness going on in terms of pre-announcing what I do in terms of investments. Other small gains I made was like $5,000 on VOO and $2,000 on GameStop. For those small things, I would say those are inconsequential. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more.